Hey folks, this is the RevoPoint Mini 3D Scanner, and it's pretty impressive. Uh, now, a few months ago, you may recall, RevoPoint reached out to me and they sent me their POP 3D Scanner, which works great. It's sort of a general use hobbyist level 3D scanner, so you can get a full picture of something in 3D. The details aren't super fine, but you get a really accurate scaling of everything. So it's great for what it is, but this new Mini is really awesome. It's designed specifically for scanning small objects and getting a lot of detail in those scans. And it's doing a great job at it in my testing. Now, if you've been following me on Instagram, you probably have seen some of the customized model kits that I've been building. Um, there was a company called Aurora in the 60s that came out with a line of Universal Monsters model kits. And they were very popular then, and different companies have picked up the molds and their licenses to reproduce those over the years. And I've collected the ones that I can get my hands on. Now, there's a company called Atlantis that is currently producing the original Phantom of the Opera model. So that's what my project today is going to be based on. So this particular model kit, um, the design is sort of based on the original Lon Chaney Phantom of the Opera, uh, but there were a few differences. And I'm not knocking the original model kit at all, but if I'm going to build it now, I feel like I should make a few little tweaks to put my own stamp and do something a little different on it. Um, the head is sort of sort of more based on the James Cagney Man of a Thousand Faces Phantom of the Opera than the Lon Chaney one, so I'm going to take a different sculpture of the Lon Chaney Phantom that I did and replace this head. So. I'm going to scan all of the model kit parts and make a new head that fits just as well as the original one does into there. So having all of the 3D data of this connection surface is going to be really important for that. The other piece that I want to change out is the mask that he's holding in his hand. Um, this mask, for whatever reason, is based on the Claude Rains Phantom remake. So I'm going to take both of these pieces and do a new version of them that more closely matches the original uh, Lon Chaney Phantom of the Opera, but perfectly fitting onto the body and into the hands, in the case of the mask, of this model kit. And that's where the mini comes in, because I started on this project a few months ago, and these hands, I wanted to make sure, because he holds the mask like that, I wanted to make sure that when I was doing my 3D sculpture of the mask that it would fit properly into his hand. Well, those fingers are so fine that the original pop was not able to capture them, and I could barely get them with photogrammetry to. The Mini, on the other hand, is doing an awesome job. Now, one of the first tests that I did when I got the Mini is I scanned this little Frankenstein head, which is also from a vintage Aurora kit. Um, and the reason is that I'm working with some friends on scaling this up full size. We're going to have it at Monster Palooza in Pasadena, actually June 3 through 5 uh, this year, 2022. I'm sure uh, I'll have pictures of that on my Instagram soon. And, but we scanned this head already with a couple of different EinScan scanners. Um, I believe it, one of them is the Pro HD and one of them is the SE. And the SE is uh, specifically for small objects like this, the Pro HD not so much. So I'm just going to line these up on the screen for you. You're looking at the EinScan SE, the EinScan Pro HD, the RevoPoint Mini, and the RevoPoint Pop. Now see if you can guess which one's which. Because I was very surprised to find that the RevoPoint Mini is definitely the cleanest scan uh, 
and I wish that I had this when we started this project because I am really impressed with this. So, I feel really good about tackling my Phantom of the Opera project with the Mini. Uh, let's walk through it. When I start scanning an object, I'm going to go into the RevoScan software and say new scan. We'll name it Phantom Head. I'm going to leave it on high accuracy and feature mode. And that brings us into the scanning interface. I'm going to adjust the gain a little bit so that we get more of the model uh, being registered at a time. I think three will be fine for this, maybe four. Um, and then line up my scanner so that it's centered. And because it wraps around and there'll be a little overlap. I like to try to keep that overlap on the back side of the piece, just in case there's some issues. So I'm going to wait until it gets just about there and start. You can see the green is what's being scanned right now, and the blue is what's already been captured. And we're almost around our one revolution. And now I can see that didn't quite get the top of the head. So I'm going to carefully pick up the scanner and just manually bring it up to capture the top of the head. Okay. And that's about it. So I'm just pausing it and then I'm just going to check over and make sure I got everything I need to get. I'd like to try to get this area under the hair and under the collar. So I'm going to do one more pass. It's registered. I'm just going to actually tip the turntable so that I can get under there. And that should do it. Okay. Pause. And oh, we got some stuff off to the side here. I'm not sure what that is. I'm just going to undo and that'll get rid of that. Okay. And then I'll hit the stop. Now this is to finish my scan and start going into turning it into a 3D model. So I want to hit complete, but I want to uncheck fuse the point cloud immediately because I want to make sure when we do fuse the point cloud that we're using the highest settings. So now we can go in here. This is the uh, option for fusing the point cloud. I'm going to check on the options there. Just make sure that's set all the way down to 0 0.02, which is the highest detail, and then fuse. Okay, fusing completed. So let's take a look and just make sure that this seems to be in line with what we're expecting. And yeah, that looks like the guy. Don't see anything crazy out of the ordinary. So now we'll go into the meshing section. And I want to leave that quality at six. The denoise at three is the default and that seems to be working well. And I'm going to turn on fill holes, which takes any uh, empty spaces where there was no data captured, and it'll just kind of cover them up. And mesh. What the mesh is doing is it's taking that point cloud, which was just points in space in the right spots, and it's connecting all of those points to build an actual uh, 3D model. And now we got meshing completed, so let's take a look at what we've got. And that is pretty impressive. And you can see even where we had some missing areas, a couple of missing spots under the lapel, it's filled those in um, to perfectly usable. So to export it, just click on export. Uh, that was fine. You can save it wherever you want. And I'll just call it Phantom Head. 
I usually do an STL, but you can also do an OBJ. Okay, exported successfully. So now we have our 3D model that we can take into ZBrush and do what we need to. So as we are scanning each of these objects, what I found works best is to try to get as much as you can in one pass. As you start to do a second pass, you kind of introduce more chances for error. And so um, that's another reason why smaller pieces work better. Um, but also by splitting it up, I'm really able to get all around each of the body parts. And in order to get as much surface on one pass as I can for each part, uh, you'll see I've got each one placed on a pin or a little piece of wire. And then I took a little blob of just regular oil-based clay. You can get something at the craft store. They include with the mini some uh, blue tack sort of wall poster putty. That's fine, and I use that for some of the pieces, but um, I like the oil-based clay because it's kind of got a firmer hold. They also sent along this scanning spray, which I tried out on some of the parts, and it's really cool um, because what you do is you can just spray it onto anything that's either really black or really glossy or transparent, anything that the scanner would normally have a lot of trouble picking up. And it's almost like uh, spraying on a coat of white matte paint, except that it evaporates after you're done and just kind of doesn't leave a trace. There's two versions, and this is the long-lasting one that's supposed to evaporate within 12 to 24 hours. I found that it's a little bit shorter than that. Um, maybe you're supposed to spray it on a lot heavier than I was, but the one that is the shorter term one that's supposed to evaporate in about four hours can sometimes start evaporating before you've finished your scanning, especially if you have a mistake and you need to restart the scan. So I like this one better. Um, and it works great. So the drawback with the Mini is that sort of the field of view of the scanner is much smaller. It's, you know, maybe about that much space that you're actually able to scan at a time, which is great if you're doing small parts like this. As you start to get into bigger parts, it means that um, you have to do a lot more passes to actually complete the object. Even something like the legs here um, I was only able to get about half of them at a time before repositioning the scanner. So after scanning, I brought each of those individual pieces into ZBrush, and I eliminated the little clay blobs and any other imperfections that were on them. Now, you can definitely see that I had mixed success with each part. Um, some pieces came out perfectly crisp and clear, and some pieces like the legs, I had some sort of fuzziness to. I think this is user error based on those pieces that came out so crystal clear like the face. Um, so I think that with some more practice, it's probably possible to get those kinds of results over everything. But it's certainly enough for what I need. And one thing that I've learned from being able to use a few different professional level 3D scanners recently is that no 3D scanner is perfect. There are drawbacks to every single one of them, and none of them will give you the perfect exact detail level that you would get from taking a direct mold of something. So these results are fantastic to me. And the other thing is that once I have those scans and I bring them into ZBrush, I'm going to be able to do some cleanup work on them anyway, um, should I need that level of detail on those parts. Now, once I had these into ZBrush, then I brought in the 3D model of the phantom head and the phantom mask that I had sculpted previously. And I was able to scale those and reconfigure them, sort of re-sculpt the drape of the hat and the, add the collar onto his face to match up with the model kit. And from there, I just printed those two pieces on my Elegoo Saturn, which is a resin 3D printer, which gives a really fine level of detail. And they fit great. Um, because the Mini is giving you not just the surface detail, but the actual scaling, when I scaled these up in ZBrush, 
they're coming out at exactly the right size to fit onto that model kit there, which is awesome. Um, this is exactly what I was hoping for out of this scanner, and the fact that it just kind of works is great. Understand, the scanning process is not foolproof. You have to do some practicing. It takes some trial and error. There are certain parts where it took me two or three or four times to get that piece to scan nicely, um, but it can be done, and you just kind of have to put the time in to learning the tools to be able to do that. This unit, to be clear, is an early unit, so there are some slight differences to what the final units will be, I'm sure. I know, for one, that this one doesn't have the um, RGB camera on it, so I'm only getting the topographical information and not the color information. Um, and I know that um, right now I'm having some trouble connecting it to my newer uh, M1 Mac. It's working great on my uh, Intel-based Mac, um, but I know that they're also working on that too. Um, the older Pop does work on the new M1 Macs, so I don't doubt that they will get this new one working on the new Macs, um, but at the moment, it's still happening. I'm really impressed with this machine. It's doing exactly what I've kind of been struggling to do with other methods um, over the last year or so, and I'm really excited to be using this on other projects soon because uh, the results are, are really cool. Thank you to RevoPoint for sending me this 3D scanner. Um, I believe their Kickstarter is probably coming out right about now. So if you're interested, you can check it out. If you make some custom parts for an old toy you have or a new toy even, let me know, send me what you make because um, <laughs> this stuff is really cool.